Hello internet, it's Jonathan here from Set Sail, and uh, it's a very cold, wintry day today in Manchester. Uh, back in January I made a video about resolutions and all the great things I was going to do this year. Uh, it was three R's, reading, routine and rhythm. Uh, I have read a bunch this year and I've done rhythm pretty well. Routine, not so much. So. I'm a self-employed guy, freelancer, all that kind of stuff. Um, not the best when it comes to routine. It's kind of one of my weak points. I'm aware of it, I'm working on it. Uh, but one thing I am very good at is procrastinating. So I find it helpful to use little apps and tricks and tools that help me to stay productive and keep getting things done and stay focused on what I need to do. So I'm gonna share those with you today and go through five apps to be super productive and stuff. Now, if you're gonna have a productive day, it matters how you start the day, right? And I actually think the best way to wake up is to use uh, an old school alarm clock, like an actual analog alarm clock and not your phone so that you're not waking up reading tweets and emails and all that stuff. And I made a whole video about why I think you should use one of those and that's up here. But if you are gonna use your phone, seeing as we're talking about apps, uh, you should check out an app called Sleep Cycle. Sleep Cycle tracks your motion and the noise that you're making when you're asleep and attempts to wake you up at the most natural point in your sleep cycle. So inside the app, you go in and set this half an hour window in which you wanna wake up, so say between seven and half seven, and it listens out for your movements and all that kind of stuff, and then tries to wake you up at the most natural point within that half an hour window. I've been using it for a few weeks now, and it does feel like it wakes you up in a more natural way. I don't know if it does or not, to be honest, but hey, it's science. Go check it out, people, try it for yourself. I just realized we cleared out the fridge for Christmas and there's no milk. That's ruined my tea making montage. That is just disappointment in a cup. Okay, so app number two is a to-do list. I find a to-do list is a really helpful thing to have, um, especially when you've got a lot of stuff going on in your brain and you're trying to remember all the things that you need to do. That stops you from being productive because rather than doing stuff, you're trying to keep all this information in your brain of all the things that you need to remember all the things you need to do. So I'm a big believer in to-do lists. Write everything down that's going on in your head, even the smallest thing, even like get some paper for the printer or like make a cup of tea. Everything that you're trying to keep in your head, stick it on a list and then it doesn't have to be in your mind anymore and your brain can focus on the things you need to do. I used to use an app called Wonderlist, which was like the standard for to-do list apps and loads of people were using it. Uh, sadly, it's not being updated anymore and the team have moved over to Microsoft um, so there are a bunch of Wonderlist alternatives out there right now. Tick Tick is probably the closest I've found to Wonderlist and you can import your lists straight in. If you're a Wonderlist user and you're looking for that alternative, just really simple, straightforward to-do list thing with sublists and comments and all of that, check out Tick Tick. Another really good simple one is Todoist. Um, both Todoist and Tick Tick will sync across all devices. Really simple, you keep track of all your to-dos, you can put them in separate lists. All that good stuff. But if you're looking for something that's a bit more robust and works really well with Teams, then I would recommend Asana. We've been using it here at Set Sail for like the past two years, and it's a really great app for keeping track of to-do lists. You can do all the sublists, you can do comments. It has inbuilt chat for Teams. You can assign different tasks to different people, and there's even an option to view your to-do list in a kind of board view. So if you're used to something more like Trello uh, or separate columns where you can move tasks around and assign them to different areas then you can use that view as well. So this is how we use Asana at Set Sail. We have these three lists, uh, one called Focus, which are the things that we really want to focus on this week. We have the random jobs, which are like the things that we probably should do, but aren't essential. And then we have our Sunday jobs, which are like the things that we'll do someday, but don't need to be done this week. So every Monday morning, we go to a coffee shop and open up Asana and figure out what tasks we're gonna put where and assign to whoever. And it all syncs with your iPhone and tablet and whatever device you're using. Every now and then a little uh, monster pops out, which is fun. And every now and then when you tick off a job, a unicorn flies across the screen, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so you've woken up, you've got your to-do list. It's now time to move on to app number three, which is an app called Forest. So to explain how Forest works, I need to explain something called the Pomodoro technique. The theory is that your brain is really good at focusing on things for around 20 minutes with little breaks in between. So some people use like the Pomodoro tomato timer thing to set a timer for 20 to 25 minutes, 
focus on a task that they need to do, and then when it goes off, they would take a break, make a cup of tea, walk around the office, and then come back to it. I have tried out this technique quite a bit, but it only works if you really focus for that 20 minute chunk. And uh, that's where an app like Forest comes in. Forest takes that concept and kind of gamifies it. So you open the app and you set yourself a timer for how long you want to focus. And the more time you give yourself, the more complex this little tree graphic becomes. And you set your time, say 25 minutes, and you press plant, and then you have to just leave your phone on a table and not touch it for those 25 minutes. So if you go check in Instagram, the timing's cancelled, you don't get to plant a tree at the end. When the time's up, you get a little notification and you also get a tree that you can plant in your garden and throughout the day, if you manage to focus for several periods of time, you can plant lots of trees in your garden and you get like a visual representation of how productive you were in that day. So once you've planted your little tree of success, you can go back and look at previous days and see how productive you've been by looking at how epic your garden looks. So it kind of takes the Pomodoro technique and turns it into a fun game with trees and stuff. Although it's not really a game because there's no bad guys and you don't really do all that much. It's cool, check it out. Okay, for app number four, it's time to talk about emails. Now, if you're a Gmail user, you can check out Inbox by Google. I think Google do a pretty good job of reducing your email clutter as it is with Gmail, and they categorize things into like your promotional emails and social network emails and updates, and hopefully your inbox should just be stuff that you actually want to read. Inbox by Google takes all that a step further by adding cool little features like attachments, they show up right there in the email and you just tap them and it opens up. It also pulls out useful information like tickets. If you're going to get on a flight, then your flight confirmation email shows your boarding time and the gate that you need to go to right there in your inbox view without even needing to open the email. It also has this swipe feature which was introduced in apps like Mailbox, so I can swipe off to the right and say, remind me about this email tomorrow or later this week or next week. So if there are emails that you don't need to focus on and you can come to next week, you can just swipe them away and clear them from your inbox and they'll come back next week. One of my other favorite features is the auto reply feature. It kind of checks over your email and comes up with some auto responses that it thinks will be appropriate to whatever was said before. So if somebody's emailed me to say that they've printed off a copy of some running orders and I can just tap brilliant thank you and it sends and I didn't even have to type or even think. Also you can do things by groups so I can go all the way back to emails that I received in July. Yes. I am that far behind on my emails. And I can just say, just swipe them all away. Just pretend they're all done because it's too late to reply anyway. It would be awkward now. So if you're the kind of person that loves to get to inbox zero, then I definitely recommend this app. And last but not least, note apps. Note apps are the perfect kind of apps for taking notes. If you want a no frills, really simple, blank, white, note-taking app, then I would recommend Simple Note. It's free, it syncs across all your devices, you type in notes, it saves them, and you can tag them, search them. So it basically does everything that you'll ever need from a note-taking app, right? Wrong. Evernote does all the things that Simple Note does, plus extras. You can add videos, you can add checklists inside notes, you can add uh, notebooks of whole categories of types of notes, you can change the font, you can make things bold, you can underline, you can set things to italics, you can highlight, you can align things left and right. This app does everything that you will ever want. And in fact, I'm using it right now to remind me of all the apps to talk about in this video. Uh, on a serious note though, it really does do a good job of categorizing your notes. So for example, songs that I'm writing have their own little notebook and then like video ideas, notes that I've been making from conferences or podcasts or sermons I've been listening to, I'll go in there as well. So Simple Note or Evernote, whichever you prefer, go check them out and you'll never have to worry about losing your notes again. So those are my five recommendations for productivity apps. I hope you found this video helpful. Also, let us know in the comments which apps you use to help stay productive and any tips and tricks you have for being productive and just generally winning at life. So thank you guys for watching and we will see you soon with another video. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and stuff. Thanks. Set sail video blog. Set sail video blog. It's a video, it's a blog as well. Set sail.